Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today and welcome to our webinar, What's New in MV 5.5.1, Sarscape 5.5, and IDL 8.7.1. My name is Zach Norman and I will be moderating this webinar. I'm excited to be joined today by Bill Okubo, our product manager for MV and IDL at Harris, who will be introducing some of the new features and functionality along with myself. Just a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. They've muted the phone lines for all attendees, so if you have any questions at any point during the webinar, feel free to enter them into the questions chat box, and we'll try to answer as many as we can at the end of the presentation. We are recording this webinar, and it, we'll have it up on our site at www.harrisgeospatial.com in the next couple of days. We'll also email you a link to the recordings as well as the slide deck that you're welcome to share with your colleagues. And now to go ahead and get started. So here's our speakers for today. I'm Zach Norman down in the bottom right. I'm a solutions engineer, so I'm on kind of the technical side of sales. Um, I use all of our products just about every day. Um, and I'm excited to be joined by Bill Okubo, our product manager, and I'll let him introduce himself and get us started. Yeah, thanks, Zach. Hi, I'm Bill Okubo, and I'm a product manager. I've been with Harris for 15 plus years, so I have an extensive background in our software technologies, and um, I think this will be a good presentation for you guys today. So on the agenda here, we have a little quick intro. I'll just introduce our product and service offering, and then uh, we'll look at the features of NV IDL. And then, especially with Envy, we have uh, done a lot of work around ArcGIS integration. And then Zach is going to go ahead and do some demos for us. In Envy, there is the Envy modeler. And then there is some integration there, again, with ArcGIS. And then also integration with our GSF uh, software that he'll talk a little bit more about for the cloud. And then we'll leave some time at the end for questions. So this is a quick look uh, at our portfolio, for, portfolio at Harris Geospatial. IDL and Envy are flagship, flagship software products. IDL is uh, general data visualization software, and Envy is a desktop remote sensing software, which is now available on uh, the cloud as well. Sarscape is one of our most significant modules to Envy, and that's because uh, we're really seeing a lot of interest in SAR processing. So NV addresses optical imagery. So with SARScape, you have the ability to work with SAR data as well. And then we have Geospatial Services Framework, GSF, and Jaguar. Those are two of our cloud and enterprise computing capabilities. Uh, we also offer MapMart, and that's a marketplace really for data that we sell through Harris. And uh, you have the capability to buy all sorts of um, optical imagery and uh, use that with our tools like Envy. And then the last two are really all about some of our services. For deep learning at Harris over the last several years, we've done a lot of uh, projects around deep learning, machine learning, so we've developed a lot of expertise in geospatial deep learning technologies. And then we offer a broad range of training and consulting services. Uh, both for those specialized deep learning capabilities as well as generalized IDL and NV computing. So a big piece of every release, especially with NV, is new sensor support. So we want to start out with what have we added with some new file support in NV 5.5.1. Just a quick side note that 5.5.1 really refers to um, the point release, and typically in our releases, this release has a lot of new features. We would typically number this at, uh, say, like a 5.6 level, but we kept it at 5.5.1 so that you avoid having to need a new license entitlement. So if you've been running NV5.5, when you download this new release or, or the IDL 8.7 release, when you download the new release, you won't need a new license entitlement. It'll just work after you've downloaded and installed it. So here's a quick snapshot of the new file formats in this release of Envy. And it's a couple of different formats for 
uh, non-US type organizations. Um, the LSAT-1B is an Alger Algerian satellite. And then the former SAT-5 is a, a Taiwanese satellite. And then uh, in addition to that, we have support for the planet scope reflectance data. So if that's something you need in your work, that's new in Envy as well. Another one that's important for us, particularly in the U.S. military and some of our uh, partners outside of the U.S. as well, is this My for NIDA format. And it's really a time-based uh, image file format that's based upon the NIDIF standard. And really what NIDIF is all about is imagery and multiple image segments that include a lot of rich metadata. So there's a lot of informational content around the imagery that's included with it. And you can see in this example here, it's a time-based uh, series of frames that are animating with a controlling type of little um, control panel dialog there. I'll turn it over to Zach here. Hey, Zach, I think uh, you might be still on mute. Thanks, Bill. Sorry about that. Um, so I'm going to be introducing some of the new visualization and analysis tools that have been added into MB for this release. Um, the first one that we're going to start with is uh, the new topographic shading tool. Um, so basically, this lets you take an elevation source, so you got a DEM or a DSM, and add um, a color ramp for the elevation and add um, sun angle for azimuth um, and elevation. Um, and basically, this lets you go through and on the fly, um, which we'll hang out on this slide for a second, which will walk you through kind of what the tool does, lets you on the fly adjust um, color tables, the angle and location of the sun, um, and dynamically shows you um, the topographic shading image that you're creating. Um, with this, you can use uh, different color spaces, so not just red, green, blue. You can go into HLS or HSB, um, which can help accentuate different features. So I'm just going to hang out here for a second. You can see in this little video, um, you can address, adjust the uh, stretching um, for the DEM itself. Um, you can go through, change different color tables, and it all updates pretty much immediately. Um, so it's a cool, nice little uh, visual, visualization tool. So in addition to this, um, another tool that's a little bit of visualization and um, also programmatic, a, a new MB task that's been added, um, you can easily um, access vector information from OpenStreetMaps. So what this little uh, animation on the right is doing, and we'll play this a couple times just to walk through it, is it's using a, an MB task to go through and based off of an image's extent, um, query the available um, uh, vector sources that are present for that scene. Specifically, this is grabbing water. So it's grabbing the location of water and it's masking out water um, in the scene from our analysis. Um, so this might be something that you could potentially be interested in, especially if you're near a coast. Maybe you're going to be using um, Quack from the atmosphere correction module. Um, you'll need to mask out water if there's a significant amount. Over here on the left, um, you'll just see a little screenshot with all the vectors in the area overlaying on the image. Um, so this is a nice tool for visually inspecting the vectors, but also programmatically accessing um, information as well. And in addition to this, um, there's a new routine for creating contour lines in MB. Um, and what you'll actually see over on the right um, is this is going to be running through the old tool for creating color or contour lines. Um, and the one thing you'll see is that it's slow. It takes a very long time. And so it's been added as a new um, visualization or annotation layer um, that will uh, show you the color line or contour lines uh, almost instantly um, for the part of this, your uh, DEM or DSM that you're actually looking at. And so what you see in the top left is a screenshot um, of contour lines over the 
uh, result from the topographic shading tool. So I'm not going to sit here and wait for this video to run because it does uh, take a little bit. You can see the progress is very slow. Um, but once you go through um, and just add the annotation, uh, you see the contour lines pretty much instantly. And at this point, I'll turn it back over to Bill for a few slides. All right. So I want to talk a little bit about our SAR data workflow and Really, this talks to capabilities that will be in SARScape 5.5, okay, and that's coming soon here in October. And uh, there's some significant new capabilities here. So one of them is that, like Envy, where we have the Envy tasks, SARScape now will have that incorporated into this release. So the tasks are really a, a more modern way, more modern form of an API in Envy, and now that's available in SARScape. And it really amounts to um, some capabilities that allow you to chain together processing steps into complete workflows. And once you do that, it can be leveraged, uh, or in order to do that, it can be leveraged through NV Modeler. That's a way to vis visually program those uh, workflow steps using the tasks. Another part of this release that's significant, particularly for our uh, partner military organizations in Europe, is this Sensor Independent Complex Data Format, SICID is how it's known, which is a SAR data format that'll be newly supported in this release. And um, in, conjunction, in conjunction with US military, uh, there will be a fair amount of interest for that, I believe. I want to talk for a minute down below there. There's some other module releases that I just want to note as well. From the same partner vendor, SARMAP, we have OpticalScape. They develop SARScape as well. And OpticalScape 542 is uh, really now available, and it has some uh, additional new features. And really what that's all about is um, it combines optical processing with SAR processing as well. And you can even fuse those data types. And um, it's available for both UAV drone type data as well as spaceborne data. And then we have NV Crop Science, which is an agricultural processing software as a module to NV. There's some um, new fixes and improvements in that release that we expect here in the month of October as well. In the graphic there, you can just see the in the yellow the workflow steps for a SAR processing workflow that's been developed in NV Modeler. So there have been some updates to NV Modeler, and just so everybody's clear, in NV 5.5, that was a new feature that we came out with, which, as I said, helps you visually program workflows. So in every release, when we have a new feature, we have follow-on releases where we increase functionality, we take feedback from customers as to what could be enhanced. And in this particular re release, the big thing that's available in Modeler is the ability to categorize different types of tasks to make it a little bit more uh, usable for your workflow. And then um, in every release, we do try to provide some supporting information. There's a number of new NV tutorial type pieces that are available. Some uh, integration with ArcGIS Pro is covered. In this particular case here, this image that you can see there is an example using Sentinel-3 marine data in the Persian Gulf area. And uh, really, it's um, showing uh, algae bloom populations there. So all kinds of good new tutorial information to help you get started uh, and keep using the NV tools. Thanks, Back Bill. Back to Zach. Yep. Yep. I'm going to take over and we're going to talk about um, some of the new IDL features that have been added uh, to this release. And then we're going to quickly to cover the ArcGIS integration and then we'll have our demo. So with this release, there's two major features um, that have been added to IDL. The first one is that now you can access machine learning capabilities and tools directly through IDL. Um, previously, you know, I, IDL's kind of history has been uh, a lot of supporting uh, MV development um, and image processing routines. 
Um, and with this release, um, some of those different algorithms for classification have been pulled out and separated so that you can now run them directly from IDL. Um, here's just kind of a list of some of the different um, features uh, that have been added for this. Um, you can check out our documentation um, for uh, uh, more information and examples that you can start with. Um, so the one over on the right is showing creating a support vector machine or SVM classifier uh, directly in IDL. In addition to this, um, we've uh, worked on kind of modernizing IDL and making it uh, a little easier to work with our uh, open source world that we live in with uh, software development. Uh, there's been a new feature added called the IDL Package Manager, uh, which makes it easy to pull in code from remote, remote sources um, and immediately start using that in your IDL session. Um, so over on the right, um, there's some little examples of what the syntax looks like. Uh, basically, if you have a repository up on GitHub or have the zip file hosted on some server somewhere, um, you can pull that down. It will unpack that and you can use it. Um, you can send somebody that uh, line of code. So instead of them having to go to GitHub, pull down um, the library, download a zip or clone it, um, you can just do that with a single line of code. It makes it easy to share and create libraries for other people. Um, in addition to this, just want to talk about the IDL Python bridge as well. Um, that's been updated for the latest Python 3.6 version, so that's 3.6.6. Um, and I believe we're going to be starting working on Python 3.7 um, as well, because um, that just came out, especially if you're using Anaconda. Uh, the latest release of Anaconda is using Python 3.7 instead of 3.6. Um, and we'll talk about MVPy in just a second uh, with some of our ArcGIS integration, which is the next topic that we're going to be taking a look at. Um, so with this, if you're not familiar, um, Harris has been a, a business partner with Esri for a long time. Um, we're really the go-to um, source for uh, advanced image an analytics um, for ArcGIS users. Um, you know, we've always had some level of uh, software integration with them, whether that's ArcMap. Um, and if you're unfamiliar with Arc Pro or haven't heard about it before, our integration with Arc Pro is based on a Python package um, called NVPy. Uh, NVPy enables you to run MV tasks or models that you've created uh, programmatically without needing to have MV up and running. Um, and so since ArcGIS uses Python behind the scenes for uh, their toolboxes, uh, that's how we can integrate directly with the interface. And so, um, you know, this is really nice because with the MV Task API and the MV Modeler, it means that you can create workflows and send them directly to ArcGIS to use them. Um, so then it's kind of make one workflow. You can use it on desktop and ArcGIS or on enterprise. And so with this, I'm going to go ahead and jump into our demo. And we'll come back to the slides here in a few minutes. Um, what I'm going to be showing today, and let me zoom in here a little bit. So I'm going to be walking through a workflow where we're going to use some hyperspectral data uh, to go through and classify uh, the location of solar panels in a scene. So we're going to be using, um, uh, we're going to derive a spectral library from this scene based on these solar panels that are located in it. Um, so here's a little example. So these are some homes. I believe this is in California somewhere. Um, so kind of where my mouse is, you can see there's some solar panels. Also down here, there's some solar panels as well. And so I'm gonna go ahead and open up the MB modeler and show you what this workflow looks like. Um, so for this example, um, we're using a predefined region of interest that isolates the pixels that we're interested in. Um, this could be replaced with a shape file or a spectral library um, for the spectra that you want to map against. Uh, then we're going to use MB's spectral angle mapper classification. We're going to use classification sieving for cleanup. Um, and then over on the right, we're going to update our raster metadata and convert our classification image to a shape file for display. So you'll notice that there's these two pink boxes here. So there's a output parameters and input parameters. Um, what this does is when I hit run in the modeler, it will actually create a dialog for me. Um, so the modeler is great because you can programmatically 
create workflows, but it also creates a user interface. So you don't need to, um, you know, hard code essentially the uh, paths uh, to files on disk. It's all dynamic. So for this, I'm going to use um, a principal components image that I previously generated. And once I hit OK, this is going to go through the different uh, steps of the workflow. It'll add the results to my view and data manager. Um, so if I close the modeler and I come back, um, if I toggle my shape file on and off, you'll see the location of solar panels over here in this region. Um, so it's very easy to go ahead and create a workflow. And this is something that you could then share with um, somebody else to use as well. So if I jump back over to the modeler, um, there's a little code tab up in the top left. Um, here I can generate an IDL program. So if you want to get into IDL programming, um, you can use the modeler to get you started. Um, you can also generate a meta task. And basically what well, all that that is, is it's an MB task that runs everything you see in the modeler. Um, so nothing fancy there. Um, if you click on generate meta task, You'll see it'll pop up another dialog with a, a JSON, which is JavaScript object notation description of everything that you've created in your model. At this point, there's this little button called Publish Task. If I click on Publish Task, um, it'll let me up, update some of the different properties of the task itself. And then I can publish these tasks to ArcMap or ArcPro, provided you have permissions to write to the folders where these files need to go. So I've already ran this ahead of time, um, so I'm not going to run it again. Um, instead, I'm going to switch over to Arc Pro, um, and we've got the exact same setup. So I've got the same image loaded in Arc, the ArcGIS Pro interface, and over in the right, where my toolboxes are, you'll see there's an MB Management Tools toolbox. When you go through and you install um, MBPy, um, this is a toolbox that will be added. Um, from this, the first thing you need to do is just configure your MB environment. Um, all that you say there is where MB is located, so it knows, you know, what uh, executable it needs to run. And here, there's a hyperspectral toolbox, that, and this is the one that I created already with our solar panel finder. So if I double click on this file, I've already got or my item in the toolbox. I already have the uh, input raster pre-populated, so it's a little bit easier to run. And then if I just click run, and we just wait a few seconds, um, this is going to kick off the exact same processing chain. And then it will display our image in the view once it has finished. You'll see it finished. It's done. You can see these little kind of red spots across our scene. We zoom in. You'll see it'll look just about the same as what we had over in MB. Now, one of the, the big advantages of the MB modeler is that it makes that task definition for you. With that task definition, I can run that on desktop or on enterprise. So next, what I'm going to show you is actually running the same workflow in a enterprise environment uh, via a web front end. So, what I've got up here, um, this is what we call the GSF dashboard. Um, this is a kind of example web application that we built for demonstration or for customers that are interested in GSF. Um, and it's just kind of a web interface allowing you to run any task that you have installed on your GSF server. So with this, I can go through, I can visualize my input data. So if I click map preview, this will load the image in pretty quickly. Um, this is using, um, some technology we've been developing uh, to stream the pixels to my browser. So as I zoom in, um, everything will update. Uh, little tiles will come in. And this is working with the hyperspectral data directly on disk uh, to load that in. Uh, more importantly here um, is we can run just about any task that's located on or that's a part of MB or IDL. Um, in this case, I've got the solar panel finder um, added to the server. So I'm going to go ahead and run this one. I just need to select my input data and then hit go. Um, from this list, you can see that I've ran this a couple of times already. 
And just like with Arc Pro, this will take just a few seconds to finish. And once this does, um, we can go through and we can display either the uh, vector or the raster. I'm gonna add both to our map here, which will also pop up in just a second. And once it does, um, You'll see the output vector comes through first. I can toggle this on and off. You'll see little blue outlines around the red pixels there. And if I zoom in um, and toggle on and off my output raster, um, you will also see uh, the classification results. And so that was all I had for the demo. I really just wanted to walk through um, how you could um, use the MV modeler to create a workflow, run that in Arc Pro via our, our integration, and then also uh, run the same tools on GSF um, without needing to do anything special or custom. And so with that, um, that's all the content that we were going to um, present today. Um, so just wanna say thanks, Bill, for joining us and helping out with the presentation. Um, at this point, um, we'll address uh, any of the questions that have come in. Um, as a reminder, you can use the uh, questions chat box in the GoToWebinar dashboard um, if you are curious about anything. Um, so I've got one for you, Bill. Um, when will the release be available? Yeah, that's a good question. The release of Envy and IDL is already available. It's available on the um, Harris Download and License Center, and that can be accessed off of our website, harrisjewspatial.com. Great, and here's one for me. Uh, can GSF run any tool in MB? Um, yes, provided that that um, tool is an MB task. Um, GSF is based on the MB task and IDL task framework. Um, so you can run just about in, any MB task. Um, some of them don't make sense to run by themselves. So that's where the MB modeler can be used. Um, you know, for example, the image registration workflow. Uh, with GSF, it makes more sense to run the whole, generate your type points, filter the type points, register images together, um, than just run a single step at a time. Um, and here's another question for you, Bill. Uh, is the MB modeler a module or added extension? Yeah, MB modeler is included with NV, so you don't have to buy an additional optional module. It's included with the base NV capability. All right, got some other ones coming in here. Um, this one is for me. Uh, are there some detailed examples for the machine learning framework? Um, yes, if you go on to our documentation center. I think if you just Google machine learning space IDL, uh, it should be the first or second link that pops up. Um, and here's another one for me. Uh, can you publish MB tasks on ArcGIS server rather than GSF? Um, so if you uh, want to run our tools on ArcGIS server, you actually need to use um, the Geospatial Services Framework or GSF as well. Um, and we, uh, you can publish um, the task or workflow as a uh, GP tool um, so that you can run it there. Um, let's see here. Another question for me is, can I run my existing IDL code on GSF? Um, if you wrap your IDL code as IDL tasks, um, then you can run it on GSF. Um, and looks like that's just about it. Um, so kind of with that, um, we'll call it a day. Um, you know, we appreciate everyone's attention and thank you, Bill, for joining us today. Uh, if we didn't get to your question, then someone will follow up with you. Uh, just as a reminder, a recording of this webinar will be made available and the slides will be emailed to you in the next couple of days. Um, you'll be able to view the webinar on www.harrisgeospatial.com. Um, thanks, everyone, and have a great rest of your day.